Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. I've got a quick project for you today. Now, I can say this is quick because normally my bags take me less than 10 minutes to make. And this is going to have a lining inside it as well as another section with a draw cord. So I've had a request from a viewer to make uh, my supermarket shopping bag, the lined version of it, but have a draw cord section at the top so that you can actually put all your Christmas gifts in there or any other gifts. And then you can just fill it up with all sorts of goodies. You won't see what's inside there because it's got a draw cord at the top. After they've been given all of their gifts, they've got a bag to take everything home and they've got a useful bag that they can use for shopping or traveling wherever they go after that. Stick around and I'll show you how to make this really easy drawstring tote. I have three pieces of fabric here. They're all exactly the same size. Now we want to have one of each of these that is 18 inches wide by 36 inches long. This is the drawstring section of the bag. This is the lining. These are both just a lightweight cotton. And for the main part of the bag, I'm using the upholstery fabric. So you remember the upholstery fabric that I got for free a couple of weeks ago. This is one of them. And it's just going to give really, really good structure to the bag. We're making these the same size as my supermarket shop bag so I know that these this pattern will work uh, it's a really good size and it'll fit lots and lots of goodies in here so upholstery fabric or a really good sturdy weight fabric like a denim or a canvas I don't want to put any interfacing or stabilizer in this bag so 18 inches by 36 inches centimeters for this is 45 centimeters across and 90 centimeters long the other thing I'm going to be using is the webbing that I usually use so this is a one one inch wide webbing or strapping it's a polyurethane it's really really strong I'm going to cut this at 44 inches or a meter 10 and then I'm going to cut that in half to give me two straps for my handles that's all we need so let's get going take your drawstring piece of fabric and place the fabric right side together I've got an open edge at the top here open edge at the bottom and I've got the fold along here we've got that folded in half then we're just going to fold that in half again and we'll mark the center both sides and open that back out again where the pin is in the center I'm going to make a mark one inch either side of the pin so I just take my one inch mark on the ruler place it over the middle make a mark here and there so we've got one inch on either side there and do the same for the other side we can remove those pins what we want to do here is stitch all the way down both long edges but we want to stop in this section here. This section here is going to be the casing where we put our draw cord. Stitch from here straight down. We'll do a half inch seam allowance throughout the entire bag and from there to the other end and we'll back stitch at the beginning and the end. So I've just popped a pin in the section that I don't want to sew. Before we do that, I'm going to prepare my other fabric as well. Take your main piece of fabric, fold it in half across the shorter side and then fold that in half again. Place a pin just in the edge there and we can open that out. So we've got our fold just here and a pin marked in the center there. We'll pop another pin in, open it out. Where these pins are, that's the marking for our handles. Once you've marked the position of the handles on one side of the bag, line up the other end of your fabric, pop a pin in the same spot, You'll have to excuse the noise of the birds in the background. I'm sitting outside my fernery and there's a whole heap of starlings. I think they are squawking about. It's a nice sound, but not when you're trying to film. What we've got here is the position of our handles marked on the back and front of the bag. Take your handles or your strapping, place that directly over the top and repeat that for the other side. So this is webbing that is one inch wide, 22 inches long for each handle. If you wanted to make your own handles, cut your fabric at four inches wide, same length and fold it in half twice. Okay, our handles are in place. We can go and stitch this down just at the very top edge there, both sides. Turn your fabric right sides together and after you've secured your handles, we're going to stitch all the way down on each side. We'll set that one aside and grab the lining. Take your lining piece, fold that in half, right side together, and we're just going to stitch straight down the side edges there and leave the top edge open. We'll take this to the machine and do that now. I'll stitch straight down each side of the lining piece. I'm back stitching at the beginning and I'm doing a half inch seam allowance. 
We'll set that one aside. I'm going to secure my handles down so I don't keep getting stabbed with these pins. Now that the handles are stitched down, I'll bring the top edges together and stitch down both side seams. I'll set that one aside. I'm going to stitch the drawstring section now. I've stopped where I've placed the pin and then I'm going to backstitch and continue again next to the other pin and backstitch and then continue to the end. And we'll repeat for the other side. My handles are on the main bag. Go to the folded section down here and I'm using my three inch template. So if you've got templates, they're a great thing to use when you're making lots of bags. I do three inch box corners for these larger bags all the time. Line up your ruler from the folded edge, measure three inches on the side edge where the stitching line is, you will measure three inches. You'll just complete that square and repeat it on the other side. If you want to, you can mark the other side of the bag. And with your corners marked there, just put your hand inside, open it out and find where your corners match up. So you'll see you've got a nice straight line going across here. And if we flip to the other side, we've got a nice straight line going across there. That's our stitching line. When I make these bags, I have a kind of a routine. Um, I like both sides of the seam to be pressed in one direction. And the reason I do that is because when I come to doing the top, I can actually do my seam in the same direction as well. Fold your seam over to whichever side you prefer. I'm folding mine over to my left. Pop a pin in place there and this is your stitching line. We'll do the same for the other side and we're going to do the same for the lining. I'm going to have my seam going in the same direction as before and we'll set that aside. We'll take that to the machine and we'll stitch across there in a minute. With your lining fabric we'll do the same. Mark our three inch box. Put your hand inside there, open it out and find your corners. I'll do the same again with my seam. Set that one aside. This is the drawstring section of the bag. So that section's open there and we've got our seams down the side. And what we're doing now is we're just going to trim along that folded edge. So I've just folded the bottom section in half where the fold is. Just going to take the very edge off it. So you can see we have a tube now. What we want to do here is open out the bags and we want to top stitch this side seam open. So you can take this to the iron, press it open or press it flat. We want to stitch both of these down and the reason we're doing that is because we've got that little opening in the center here we need to have this stitch down nice and flat so that our draw cord can go through and be drawn in and out. So I'll take this to the machine and top stitch all the way down on each side. So open the drawstring section up, seams on either side and we'll start down one side and keep your seams nice and flat underneath, stitch to the end. And then when you get to the end, just turn around and come straight back up. There's the seams open and pressed on either side of the stitching line there. Repeat for the other side. We'll set that aside and we'll do the boxed corners on the lining and the main part of the bag. When you've stitched the corners down, you can cut these ears off and we'll just stitch about a quarter of an inch or half an inch away from the stitching line. Repeat that for the main bag. And we can trim these ears off as well. Okay, we've got all three bag pieces ready now. Take your drawstring section and we're going to fold this in half. So this is the outside of the bag. We've got our seam on the inside. Turn it the wrong way around. Bring the raw edge of this side to the raw edge of this side, making sure that you enclose the raw seams. So take this end and this end, bring them together. You can pin it in place if you like. Match the seam on this side with the seam on this side. So with your raw edges matched up here and this casing folded in half, we've got a fold at this end and that section where we left the seams open earlier becomes 
the casing for our cord. Line everything up beautifully. Shortly we'll take this to the machine and we're going to stitch one inch from the top edge. So we'll do one inch seam all the way around the entire section which will be just at the edge and then I do actually like to do a top stitch just at the very very top edge there as well. I do that more for stability than anything else because when you've got a cord in there the cord will stress the fabric at the top when it, the, with the friction all the time so I like to run a stitch all the way around the top edge as well. An inch from the top and then a 1 8 inch top stitch. So where that little opening is here I place it under the machine. I'm going to start with a back stitch here, stitch a one inch hem all the way around. At the next seam, I like to do a back stitch again as well. There's my one inch seam all the way around. Now I'm going to start at the top again and I'll start from one section just here because we don't need to stitch this together. Start here, come to the other side just with a one eighth inch seam allowance. And that's our casing done. Take your lining piece and place the raw edges inside your lining. We've got the two layers that have been folded together of the raw edge of the casing. Line that up with the seam on your lining. Now my lining seam is going in this direction here, so I also want that to go in the same direction. These seams in here are both open, so they're not going to be causing any problems. Place those together and go to the other side and do the same. So you can see my seam is going to the right and I've continued that at the top. Line it all up and we'll pin that in place. So we've got our draw cord section on the inside of the lining on the right side and turn your lining the right way out with your cord section. So we have that all the right way out. Pop that inside the main body of the bag and we're going to match up the side seams. Have the bag handles on the inside. Line up the side seam. Now you can see that the seam here for the lining is going over to my left now because it's inside out. The lining is pushed over to the left and the main bag is on my right. So they're going to lock in nicely and the thickness of the seams is going to be distributed better as well. So this seam goes to the right, that one goes to the left, the one in the middle is open. Repeat for the other side and then we can distribute that evenly. Okay, so that's all pinned together. We can go now and stitch all the way around, but we do need to leave an opening for turning the bag through. Now, usually I'll leave an opening on the side seam of the lining or at the bottom seam of the lining. I actually forgot to do that in this. So if you remember to do that when you're doing this bag, pop your opening on the lining, but if you forget, it doesn't matter. We're going to do it at the top. I'm going to leave this section open here for turning through. So we'll backstitch at the beginning and the end all the way around. So I've got a half inch seam allowance again. When I get to the section where the handles are, I do actually like to reinforce that. Uh, there's always a lot of weight pulled against the handles. So I'd just like to make sure they're not going to come off. Backstitch at the beginning of the opening here and continue all the way around. When you're finished, find the opening and we'll turn the bag through. With the bag turned through, we need to close up the opening that we've got in here. So that little opening there. And we also need to top stitch the lining, the drawstring and the main bag all in place. That's all clipped together at the top there. I'm going to do a top stitch close to the very edge. And then I'm going to do just a decorative one inch uh, seam around the bottom. It's something that I usually do on all of my shopping bags so uh, it's just something I'm going to do on this one. So top stitch along the top there and then another row of stitching an inch from the top. I usually like to start at the side seam When I get to the handle I'll do the triple stitch again. I always do this when I get to all my handles And I finished along the top edge there. The next line that I'm doing is optional. It's something that I like to do on my bags that are made with upholstery fabric. It's just something I've always done. So I'm going down another inch and I'm just going to do another row of stitching all the way around.
there we go that's all finished and all we need to do now is put some cord in the top here okay let's put the draw cord in now I couldn't find any what I'm going to use today is just a couple of shoelaces uh, so you want enough shoelace that is going to go around the entire top section of this draw cord bag. So a 40 inch piece of cord will be great. We need to feed the cord in at one end, bring it all the way through around to the other side and have the cord come out on this side. Then you can tie it. Then we can take the other cord and that will be fed in from the opposite side. And then you'll be able to just pull it open and close. I've lost my bodkin and my big safety pin. So I'm just going to attach my cord to the end of some tweezers. Feed it through. Pass it through the other opening there. And when you've passed it all the way through, just tie these into a knot, distribute the cord evenly, and we'll repeat for the other one. Pass the next one through at the opposite end that you've got this tied. With the other one pulled through, tie that in a knot as well. And there we go. Pull both your cords, and then you've got the nice draw cord at the top of your bag. Tie that up and nobody will see any of the goodies that are inside there. And you can tuck it away nice and easily and use this as a regular shopping or carry bag. I have a couple of visitors. Hello you, this is Caesar, my son's dog, and Coco. Hop up Coco, hop up. Okay, Coco's tiny compared to Caesar. He's such a nice dog. He's a Carna Corso and mine is a Boxer. Adorable dog. But you just drool everywhere, don't you? Okay, out you go. Out. Outside. Both of you. Okay, they're obedient. <laughs> I've got both dogs standing at the door just there waiting for me to allow them to come back in. But oh, look, Caesar just drools everywhere. So here it is. As you see this now, it's my supermarket shopping bag. And I think most of you know that I've done about 3,000 of these already. This time I've lined it and I've also popped an insert where you can fill up this bag with lots of goodies for Christmas and then you can just close the cord and the recipient isn't going to see what's inside here. So I think this has come up really really well. Uh, I've popped a label on this and I'm going to try and sell this in the shop and I'm just going to pull a figure out of my head $30. I sell my regular unlined bags for $15. I sell my lined bags for $25. So I think I'll just pop a $30 figure on this. See if I can sell this before Christmas and if I can I might actually make some of these up for next Christmas. Uh, I think they'll actually do really really well. I love the concept as well. This can be used when you go shopping and you overload your bag. You can at least fit a little bit extra in the bag um, and even if you're going out traveling you can fit your clothes, towels, all sorts of things in here and it just gives you a little bit of extra room. After doing a lined version of my supermarket shopping bag, I had somebody comment on that particular video and asked if I could do the same bag, but with a drawstring section at the top so that we can close this up for gifts. So thank you to, now I don't know if I'm going to get the pronunciation right. Thank you to Baker Wanabe or Wannabe. I don't know, but you'll correct me if I'm wrong. Is it Wanabe? Anyway, thank you Baker for the idea to do this particular bag. It's just a modification on my shopping bag, which has got a lining in it and an extra insert for the draw cord. I think this is actually quite cute. Let me know in comments what you think of this particular bag. Do you think it's something that I can sell? I, I think it might actually do okay. In a lighter fabric and something perhaps that's a little bit more fun, this could be a really nice bag for children to take to the pool with them in summertime. They can have some nice kids print on there and then they can put their bathers and things like that in there as well. A great little bag for a sleepover as well. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I shall catch you next time. Bye for